Welcome this evening. Uh, I'm here. I'm Chris and Emily is here as well. Our handy dandy intern for another 24, 48 hours or so we have her. <laughs> so she's going to hang out with us and um, help. She has gone to the state fair many, many, many times and hopefully can give us some good advice and uh, help answer questions. So welcome to everybody who's here. And as you can see by the first screen, we've been frantically figuring out all all the people who are coming and going and Heather and Jan to the state fair and we have 47 youth just doing general uh, static exhibits, which includes all the stuff that was in the 4-H building and arts in demonstrations performing arts. Um, I think that's kind of it so this does not include any livestock we have 47 youth heading up to the great Minnesota get together just for general static so give yourselves a round of applause. Excellent work, everybody. It's going to be a ton of fun. Hopefully, you're excited to go. Um, oops. Yep. So here's here's my first, the most important thing that I need to get out today. We've had five. Um, so everyone had the option of staying overnight, doing the encampment up at the up at the fairgrounds. And most of everybody of the 47 people have chosen not to stay overnight. But of the full, of everyone, we have five male that want to stay overnight for the two nights. And we have one female that wants to do both nights. And then there's two folks that are going to add to that on Sunday. So we'll have a total of three women on Sunday. So we really do need to have chaperones. We really, really, really need one male and one female chaperone that are willing to stay on the fairgrounds in the 4-H Hilton, as they call it, uh, both for Saturday and Sunday nights. So please reach out to me. I did find out that if we don't provide chaperones that the state fair can charge us back in some way, shape or form. And um, the, other, the other thing I can do is I can reach out to other counties that are going at the same time that we are going and seeing if they have enough chaperones that could help us out. But be really really great if we could have anyone volunteer that needs to be a screened adult and is willing to um to help chaperone these five six seven eight wonderful youth that are going to go up to the state fair so please let me know if this is something that you can do or that you can convince someone else to do so that being said five eight people going up i does not help me does not allow us to buy for a bus so we are not going to run a bus for those people to get them up to the state fairground. So I'm sorry about that. Um, carpooling and personal transport is the way to go. And tomorrow when I send this email back to you, I'm gonna send an email to all of the participants, either tonight or tomorrow, probably tomorrow, um, with the slides and the recording of everybody that's going. And then maybe you can look through that and, and carpool see there's other folks that you might know and then you can work together to get up to the the fairgrounds hopefully that's helpful but we can't do a bus for just six to you know six to eight people this is a oh am i I'm not sure if this is blocking but here's a good thing if you we talked about this at the up in the show tent Here's a QR code for State Fair resources. This is super important. You can either, um, Emily, could you drop that into the chat? The link into the chat, or you can scan the QR code. This is something that's really, really important for all families to have. Excuse me. So I'll just wait here for a second um, while you maybe scan that QR code and have it available to you because there's a lot of questions that are going to be able to be answered with this. Um, resource guide. Everybody had a chance to get it? I hope. That's kind of the, actually that's the same one. No, nope, here's another one. This is the State Fair Exhibitor Guide. This is specifically for 4-H exhibitors. So this is another one you can scan and Emily can drop in the chat for you to to get and to have it on your device. This is for you all to know about Everything State Fair, Ooh, I have a hummingbird. Everything State Fair for general exhibitors. So I'll wait a second. I can see some cameras coming up here. Super important. It's all in one place. 
Things to remember as you're going up to the state fair. Think about good sportsmanship and teamwork. Be fair, respectful, safe and healthy. It's, there's a lot of people up there. If you're going, if you're going to go stay overnight, that's amazing. Even if you're going to go with your family, always remember to, a buddy system. You never want to go anywhere alone. Make sure that you are safe. Safety, safety, safety. Make sure that you are with other people and um, other folks know where you're going to be. And the sportsmanship and the teamwork, all the, not only does it apply to, as you're talking with other people and and communicating and, and meeting folks from other counties, but also applies to social media. So you want to make sure that what you're putting out there on your social media um, sites is is respectful and and congratulatory and um, makes other folks feel good as well. Everybody going up will get a T-shirt. Yay! You only get one T-shirt. So even if you go for more than one encampment, you'll still get the one T-shirt. Um, and chaperones are going to be the ones picking those up. And if that, if we don't end up with chaperones or in, in, the, in the long end, I may probably pick them up after the state fair and bring them back to the county. But everybody who's going up there will get a T-shirt. Static general folks, you're not required to wear them for judging. Livestock folks are required to wear them for judging, but other folks are not. It's just a, a gift from runnings. And so it's it's a fun free shirt. This one's a different one from your show shirt. Is it different? You'll get yeah. So there's a comp peer one and then a, oh. a runnings one. The runnings one everyone gets, and then the comp peer one only livestock get. There you go. So the group on here is not going to get a comp your shirt, but you still get a free shirt. So if you were going to stay overnight, this might be what your room looks like up in the, would you say that that's a fair assessment of what this, what rooms look like upstairs, Emily? Uh, yes. <laughs> so they're basically, you know, twin beds in bunks. And if you're staying overnight, maybe Emily could pop that in the, in the chat as well. The state fair guide is what you would pack. Curfew is at 11 p.m. It's pretty it's a pretty tight curfew and you have to make sure you wear your buttons to get you in the dorms so everyone got a button but for those who are staying overnight make sure you have that because that's what's going to get you up into the dorms if you're staying overnight prescription medication we must have those uh for two chaperones so make sure you prepare Parents, family members, make sure you prepare those. And then we have a separate form that I can get to you. If you need that, let me know. We'll hand those off to staff or chaperones. We do have nursing staff. Letting people in. We do have nursing staff in the 4-H building. And, um, but they don't have to do stuff like asthma inhalers or insulin or bee sting stuff. Only um, other prescription medications. For those of you staying overnight, also required to do KP Tootie. KP actually stands for Kitchen Patrol, I believe. So if you didn't know what that one meant, it means you get to help work in the kitchen. You'll be eating your meals in the in the dorm, so also be needing to help in the kitchen. It just helps the kitchen staff, makes things go well, and um, and it's fun. It's just like working in the food, well, maybe not just like working in the food stand, but it'll be fun for you as well. And the chaperones will help that schedule. Stay informed. Watch your 4-H websites. Check out the mobile app, social media. Don't get stuck on your cell phone. You know, look up and see what's going on. Be where you need to be, when you need to be there, and ask questions. Always look for someone with a State Fair shirt on, 4-H name tags. Everyone's there to be helpful. So just ask questions if you're not sure what you need to have happen. Sorry, if you're not sure. So there's a State Fair app. Some of you may have the um, 4-H app on your phone already for Carver County. It's that same app. You wanna look for the State Fair guide. It's also in that same app. Um, or you can just download it and use it for all things State Fair 4-H in either Apple App Store or Google Play. You can do that or you can do the old QR code like everybody's doing right now. Some people like to use the app, some people don't. But I'll leave it here for a second. You can snag it if you'd like. And then you'll have it for Carver County in the fall. Then you'll be looking for the Minnesota State Fair. You see it right there on the bottom. That's what you're going to look for once you get the app installed. 
And then once you have it installed, you can switch from State Fair back to Carver County or check out another county for that matter. We have these fun things up there called Minnesota Meats and Chef for a Day. You don't have to register today or any, you know, it wasn't on your paperwork. It's stuff that you do when you get up there. Um, I'm not familiar with this a ton, but I do know that our encampments, Chef for a Day, would happen on Saturday from 6 to 8 p.m. So if you're up there and your judging is on Saturday in the evening or you're just hanging around at the fair on Saturday in the evening, you could participate in the chef for a day you would just go to the superintendent's office and emily i believe that's right when you walk in the main entrance of the 4-h building right the superintendent's office is that right to the like right on the right hand side yeah when you walk in the big door it should be to your right before you it's to go upstairs ah right right opposite the stairwell right so you could participate in that you just have to sign up for it so that would be fun um, do you know anything about the Minnesota Meats thing, Emily? Was that something you've ever done? Uh, yeah, the Minnesota Meats is during the livestock encampment, and you cook your species, I think, or something close to that, and you're in a team, and it's actually really fun. I've done it, like, twice, I think. I just thought it was funny how you said you cook your species. And I've helped with it at... You, you do. So like if I went and showed a pig, you cook pork. So or I, I think you can cook other like other animals, too. I don't know. <laughs> other meats. It just sounded funny. I'm sorry. It just <laughs> made me giggle. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm still tired from the fair. Raise your hand if you're still just a little sleepy from the Carver County Fair. Mm, yes. Raising hands. OK. Logistics or some logistic -y things. So if for some reason you've got your. Um, this is the, the the schedule for the static judging. And let's say something happens and you can't go on Sunday. You only can go on Monday for judging. You have to let me know. There's a form for that. If something's happened and your lodging chain, your lodging plans changed, you got to let me know because there's a form for that. You want to thank your chaperones and all the people that have been supporting you to get to this fair? Yeah, you don't need a form for that. Just thank them. Tell them they're great. Make sure you tell you support your sorry, make sure you just tell the folks that have been helping you all along to, to, to do all your projects and to help even help with your animals for that matter. Just tell them thanks. You don't need a form for that. But for everything else, trust me, I've got a form. These are the other dates in case you're wondering what's all happening for the other Carver County people, which, by the way, I should tell you, we have 40 livestock people going as well. So not only do we have 47 static general performing arms demonstration. All those other people, we have 40 additional youth going for livestock and llama. So I think this is amazing. This is a super, I'm just so excited. I'm so proud of everybody. I can't even stand it. So the livestock folks are going to be up there um, August 24th to 27th over my birthday. And then it's llamas and then it's generals. So that's kind of how it all shakes out. Um, so yeah, we've already, for, is anybody on here doing virtual? I think we only had one person doing virtual and I didn't see him come in. So we can just kind of, we'll skip that. This is the link to the schedule that I just posted. Maybe Emily could drop that in the chat. Also, if you haven't dropped off your exhibit to the office or I don't have it already in the office, this is what I need. I need like a sticker or a piece of paper on the back with your name, the county, your club name, how many pieces and what category your um, your exhibit is going to be. I need you guys. I need you to drop it off tomorrow. I know that's different from the paperwork that you got before, and that's my error, but I knew you need to have drop it off to the office tomorrow. And if this is a if it's trouble, you need to let me know. I need to bring them to the fairgrounds on Monday morning. And that is my error. I apologize. They originally told you a different date, but it's definitely got to be tomorrow. So hopefully that's going to work. Let me know if that doesn't or if we need to make other arrangements. Chris, we have a question in the chat. Do oh, we thanks. know what Arts In is? Do we yeah. know what? When Arts In is? Not yet. Hmm, let me guess. Did Greta and Holly ask that question? Hmm. No, I don't know yet. I will, as soon as I know, I for sure I will tell you. We've asked for Sunday and we're hoping for Sunday. That's the day that I'm going to be up there because I want to see you guys perform. So I'm hoping that it's going to be Sunday and I will let you know as soon as I find something out. 
uh, so static, we talked about this. I need the stuff at the office tomorrow by four. Uh, if you are bringing up food, the flowers, gardening, vegetables, and things that don't fit in my car, those you bring, sorry, flower gardening, all the things that you see listed on the screen, you bring with you to your judging. Oversized exhibits is on this slide. And, and I think for those of you who have oversized exhibits, we've already chatted about this, but if not, they also need to be dropped on to bring brought up to the fairgrounds on Monday before noon on August 22nd. Is that a Monday? Yep, that's still Monday. And then you also have to go back up and pick them up because they still, if I didn't fit in my car on the way up, they're not going to fit in my car on the way back. So then I'll bring everything up to the uh, up to the fair. You go, you get judged, you put the stuff back in the display or for foods. I'm not sure you probably take it either take it with you or yeah, you probably take it with you because you can't leave it there. And then at the end of the fair, I go back up to the fairgrounds on the day after Labor Day. I pick everything up. And then the next day, you will then come to the office and pick up your precious items and get all the stuff that you did at the safe fair. Questions? Simple. Need back to the chaperones. We're still looking for chaperones. Still don't have anyone for regular encampment. Livestock, llama, not so much important for this crew, but still looking for chaperones. So please, please, please consider. Um, again, we, this is mostly for the folks that are staying overnight. We're gonna set you up with communication lines uh, and everything will be great. It's gonna be fun. Thank you, peoples. Any other questions? Concerns? Hey, Chris, there was one question. Um, uh, the FICE are saying arts in kids can move their project judging to the same day as arts in, correct? Yes, that is correct. That goes with the, yes, that's, that's a good point. So let's say if we arts in gets scheduled on Sunday and you have, if one of the arts in kids are doing um, health and wellness, then we can do the form and ask that that health and wellness judging gets changed over to Sunday during hopefully in the same time period or maybe after the arts and performance. Yes, those are the kinds of things that they will absolutely move judging for. Good point. Any other questions? Raise your hand if you're excited to go to the State Fair. Anyone? Thumbs up. Um, Chris, I had a quick question. Yes. Um, I don't know if we know this yet, but do you know um, what stage um, performing arts will be at? Will that be, I think it's, uh, will that be kind of the normal or did that change? The, ha the stage hasn't changed to my knowledge. I don't have a schedule yet though, either for you. We, here's how things go. We got all the paperwork from everybody Sunday night, put everything together. And then Monday I dropped it off at our regional office to the last two days. Rita has been making changes and we've been catching things and making stuff. So hopefully by Friday, but I can't promise it, but we're hoping by Friday, we're going to know if we have any changes, when arts in is going to be, when, um, when performing arts and demonstrations also are a thing. So there's all kinds of still kind of loosey goosey pieces out in the wilderness that we need to, to get figured out. So we're hoping that by Friday at the very latest next week, Monday, that we know what's happening. We can tell you what's when and where to go. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Anyone else? Okay. I think we could stop recording then and I'm going to send this whole thing. There's one more question. Oh, one more Sorry. question. Thank you. Um, we, it, uh, it was asked what time they can drop off projects tomorrow. And I think we're in the office all day. So 8 a.m. to, if you can do it by four, that would be great. Eight to four tomorrow. Excellent. Alrighty.